People often ask me, are the nominees for Canada's worst driver as bad as they seem? Yes, they are. Then they ask, so you mean when that guy from Calgary hit 27 things in five minutes, he was really trying? What? Yes, he really was. Off flip. Then they ask, when you ride with them as a passenger, aren't you afraid? Faster, faster. I'm petrified. We're down to the final six nominees for the title of Canada's Worst Driver. Oh, that freaking bus! This episode, the candidates will each drive four brand new challenges. Oh, my God! Then the most improved will graduate and go home. My name is Shelby, and I've been nominated as Canada's Worst Driver by my brother, Ellerick. Who won't usually let Shelby drive. Speed up, but you're still not doing 50 yet. I don't want to do 50. It's a nice drive in the city. Shelby never drives the speed limit. I wouldn't say I'm a danger on the road. He's just an obstacle on the road. At our driver rehabilitation center, All right. Shelby's learning a lot. Yeah, I did it! But he still has a very long road in front of him. And a car behind him. Whoa! Shelby's competition... I have to turn! I hate you! ...includes an out-of-control hairdresser from Victoria, B.C. My name is Billie Jean, and I've been nominated by my cousin, Nikki, as Canada's Worst Driver. Every time I get into a car with her, it's scary. For the last year... My brakes aren't working that well. Billie Jean has averaged one accident every month. Do you have something you want to say to me? Yeah, you're an idiot. <laughs> I don't use my rear view mirror when I'm driving because it's usually pointed at me. Oh, there's a Tim Hortons right there. Shut up. Right here. Oh my! That actually kind of hurt my elbow. Here at rehab, we're trying to get Billy to focus on the road. But with this many shiny things around, it's difficult. Oh, this is the biggest rear view mirror I've ever seen. <laughs> the next nominee failed his driver's license test six times. Watch the car. Oh my god! My name is Jason. I was nominated by my husband Adrian as the Canada's worst driver. Yep. This Vancouverite is so terrified of driving. Which is the right? You're in the right lane. His driving is terrifying. Oh my god, I'm so frightening. Scary, scary, scary. Nightmare, Adrian. It's nightmare. At rehab, Jason is slowly learning the fundamentals of smart driving. I think I might have did it. But he's still a nervous wreck. <laughs> that brings us to this petrified Calgarian. Oh, where do I go now? My name is Manny, and I've been nominated as Canada's worst driver by my boyfriend, Bruce. That would be an F on a driver's test. And I can give you an F, too, because I'm just in the mood. F off. Marnie suffers from severe driving anxiety. <laughs> I don't want to do this. The car puts me in such a state of panic that I don't function. Why am I so scared? I grip the wheel. My knuckles get white. That's on a good day. On a bad day, <laughs> Marnie lets go of the wheel. And she closes her eyes. Down the gas. Yeah. Down the, open your eyes. Oh, I can't. The next candidate is this road rager from Ottawa. I'm getting off on the exit back up here soon. My name is Ed, and I've been nominated for Canada's Worst Driver by Elizabeth. We were living together, and uh, we split up in February. Ed's aggressive driving 
is a big reason these two are no longer a couple. He is a menace on the roads. I've always wanted to have gun turrets on top of my rover. If you're gonna drive like this and wait, can I get in the air? You know, like, that's so stupid. That's so asinine. He's been in half a dozen accidents in two years. One crash totaled Ed's car. You keep on calling the, the accident when I total the car. Yeah, because that's what happened. I think I am a fairly good driver. Good driver with some bad luck. Look at this. Stupid For her job, the next candidate drives about 100 kilometers a day around southern Ontario. My name is Jennifer Kritzer, and I have been nominated for Canada's Worst Driver by my boyfriend, John. In the last year, Jennifer has had nine serious accidents. I always drive away after I hit cars. <laughs> but she's only reported one of them. It could have stayed when I hit a car and actually had my insurance go up, but that would never happen. I just can't afford any more insurance than what it already is. It's just not worth it. <laughs> when Jennifer got to rehab, I took her driver's license. She won't get it back until she atones for her criminal behavior. This next course is the most hair-raising one we've ever built. This device is a free-floating parking space, and it will teach Canada's worst drivers how to make really quick decisions with the softest of touches. We call it the balance beam for unbalanced drivers. For this challenge, Canada's worst drivers have to balance the beam by driving one vehicle, <gasps> while the person who nominated them drives an identical vehicle. You keep moving that vehicle one more time when it's coming on the upswing, you're not getting a beer later. Good communication is crucial in this challenge, so we've wired the cars allowing the drivers to hear each other. No, I'm moving. No. I am moving. The ramp. I am moving. The I am moving. To show you just how sensitive this teeter-totter is, I'll be trying to level it first with our resident psychologist, Dr. Louisa Gambora. So we're supposed to end up level. The doctor is joined on our team of experts by the instructor we've borrowed from Young Drivers of Canada, Scott Marshall, as well as Philippe Letourneau, and the man who wants Jennifer to stop hitting and running, Cam Woolley of the Ontario Provincial Police. You should realize it's a criminal offense. It's not, not funny, it's not cool, it's not socially acceptable. At the end of every show, I got their licenses right here. This is what it's all about. The experts and I decide who will graduate. Ed? No. no. And who will remain on the road to becoming Canada's worst driver. To successfully balance the seesaw, it's really important that the drivers on this beam go as slowly and as smoothly as they can. You want to go back just like an inch. Stop, 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 that's it. Is that there? Are we there? Wait, wait, wait. We're done. We're done. Hey, hey, hey. It took me and the good doctor eight minutes to get balanced. And that is how you balance two cars on a teeter-totter. I'm going to leave this way. Jason is first. What's the goal? We have to balance? We, yeah, we got to balance. OK, I'm going to back a little bit. OK. I think you're going to go up very soon. Jason, Jason, Jason. Yeah. Okay, a little overcorrecting. Yeah, I think I'm okay. This is really all about making hair trigger decisions. When it's about to balance, you need to think and act. Otherwise, you're gonna be like one of those people who gets left in the intersection. Oh, overcorrected, overcorrected, overcorrected. Oh. Don't worry. Chains are attached to the cars so they can't drive off the end. Yeah, oh, sorry. And these rails prevent the drivers from going off the side. You stay there. You want me to come towards you? Jason doesn't know how to use the gear shifter. That's OK. All right, Jason, I'm getting in with you. All right. Like most drivers, Jason thinks he has to press the button to go from reverse to drive. When in fact, all you got to do for drive is just hit it. OK. Boom, you're in drive. If you're in a parking lot and you go, oh my god, I have to go right now, you don't need to touch the button. 
The button is a safety device that needs to be pushed to get into reverse. But if you're already in reverse, the shifter can be freely pushed into drive, where it will automatically lock in place. And now, let's yeah. practice this again. Drive, reverse. Are we ready to start this again? Yeah. Now that he knows how to react quickly, success should be imminent, but... Why aren't we going backwards? Let's go backwards. Oh! Gosh. Jason does get quicker. We're so close. But he doesn't get balanced. Oh, 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 oh. Because he's just not decisive. Oh my god. In the end, Jason quits. I think it's martini time. Ed's next. Working together is not something Ed and his ex-girlfriend usually do well. Shouts! We can't go at the same time, okay? In fact, poor communication has been a jarring issue in this relationship. Oh, duh! Be ready, go now! Today, though... You're doing good. It's being cooperative. That was almost at it, Elizabeth. That I was know, almost I know. it. Keep going slow. Keep going. The result of Ed working with his ex-girlfriend is success. I think we did it. I think we're there. Yeah! This civilized joint effort is a first for Ed and Elizabeth. We've uh, accomplished something within our relationship that we've never accomplished before. We've uh, worked together. Uh, communicated effectively to have a positive outcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> After the break, Billy Jean has a revelation. I've never seen that before. And Marnie has a conniption. <laughs> Canada's worst drivers are learning how to change gears quickly. Drive and move a vehicle smoothly. Ah! Nervous Marnie's up next. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Stop! Stop! What do I do? Ah! Ah! What do I do? Do I still back up? Marnie's trying to back up. Keep going back a little bit. But her engine is straining and her rear wheels are fighting her. I can't, I can't, it won't. Oh! After 21 minutes, Marnie's lost her patience. Okay, what are we doing? You're just going forward, backward, you're not telling me nothing. We're doing the same thing all the time. No, we're not, because I don't know what I'm doing. Ah! Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Oh my! No, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. The reason Marnie's engine is fighting for every inch is because her parking brake is still on. Okay. Oh. How long has that emergency brake been on? Your entire performance. <gasps> Ten minutes later, Marnie gives up. I am a driver. I always attributed my bad driving to my nervousness. Shelby's next. Buckle up, my friend. I'm here to make sure Shelby takes control. Okay, now I gotta go forward. That's too much. Okay, go up really slowly. Okay, forward, 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 quick. We can do this. Just back up. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. The interesting thing here is we're seeing Shelby take a much more active role. Back up slowly. The minute it starts to move, I'll back up. That's the right idea. I think he did it. Lean back, lean back. I'll lean forward. Yeah, we did it. Shelby is becoming a safer driver. I'm thinking next time we go out, I can drive. Not yet, still. The next teeter-totter driver is Billie Jean. Wait, 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 wait. Shoot. Billie Jean shows her impatience oh. by racking up five crashes in less than three minutes. Oh my God. 
That was a rough one. When I teach Billie Jean how to shift into drive without using the button... So I can just go like that. Okay. Her response time quickens. I just went too fast on that one. And after one more minute, she almost does it. If you get out, you'd probably help us. <laughs> just walk. Just walk a little. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we're doing it. Stay right there. Yay. Yeah. Billy absorbed a lot of impact, but she also absorbed the lesson. Every challenge, I'm learning so much, and I feel like I'm getting so much better. Jennifer is the last driver to weigh in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in the decisive moments when Jennifer needs to act... No, that was too much. That was too much. <laughs> she does nothing except laugh. <laughs> After 18 minutes of laughing... <laughs> I've had enough. Try to do this calmly and really, like for real. Yeah. As soon as it's not a joke... Oh. Oh. Jennifer does it. Yay! <laughs> when Jennifer concentrates, she's not half bad. After the break, <gasps> the country's lousiest drivers hit simulated ice. Why don't Canadians learn the proper way to drive on ice? <laughs> Every snowstorm, we see hundreds of collisions. We blast around, hoping for the best. But in Denmark, you know, you have to take an ice driver training course before you can even try to get your license. Before we give Canada's worst drivers back their licenses, we're making them take the course. Our slick instructor, John Powell, has been teaching ice driving to Canadians for 28 years. Look, 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 just do gas, 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 and stop. Oh. These wheels are on hydraulic pistons. When John presses a remote button, the hydraulic wheels push down, and this steel frame lifts the car slightly up. When the car lifts, the normal wheels lose some of their traction. Gas, 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 gas. And it's just like driving in winter. Incidentally, ice and snow are involved in about 90,000 Canadian crashes a year. Okay, I was looking. <laughs> Ironically, the way to deal with an icy corner is to accelerate through it. Good, good, good. After nine corners, Billy's got it figured out. Woo! <laughs> Shelby learns the lesson in seven corners. You're doing very well, Shelby. Oh, thank you. Ed gets it in four corners. Very well, Ed. But Jason needs a dozen. Gas, 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 gas. Oh! You chickened out. Yeah. You got back on the brake. Well, we'll fix that. Fixing Jennifer. Steer, steer, steer. Gas, 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 gas. Takes nine corners. That terrifies me. And she's not the only one. I'm terrified. I am absolutely terrified. Marnie has always believed that if a driver hits ice, <gasps> they are destined for a crash no matter what they do. Ah! Oh my god. Gas, 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 gas. Oh my god. Oh my god. After nine corners, I'm getting used to that now. Marnie learns how to accelerate through an icy slide. I got that one nailed. Yeah. Are you gonna pass this challenge? I did. This is the learning. The challenge is later. No. In fact, the challenge is right now. And it's a test of nerves. I have to do this. Marnie thinks that somewhere on this hill, John will press the ice button, causing her to lose traction. The twist is, conditions will remain perfect. Will she panic? Oh, my God. Marnie's not fooled by the lack of ice. That's a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. That, that was a the ten. challenge? Perhaps this challenge is too easy. Jason's next. Headed for the end of the course, Jason starts to break, but he barely slows down. Breaking, 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 breaking. No. 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 With no simulated ice, it's hard to know why Jason slid through the barrier. Whatever the reason, Hitting the curb smashed the car's fancy hydraulic ice simulating system. This challenge ends 
with a mysterious crash. Step on the gas. You, you stepped on you the didn't gas. You stepped on the gas. You you stood on the brake. No, I step on the gas. You stepped on the gas. Yeah. Well, all of the confusion is over now. There is no excuse for ever hitting anything in a vehicle, especially if you're not going anywhere. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to take this car and turn it all the way around inside this cross. As an added plus, I'll be standing on the hood watching where they're going. The cross is a lesson in frustration that can be done without a paint scrape in 29 turns. I think so. Good punch it. Jason seems hostile. So, Shelby's up first. Getting into the first spot, Shelby gets his rear tire hooked. Well, he didn't last very long. He's gone flat. Oh, boy. Shelby knows he's in trouble, but he's unaware of his flat tire. Oh, he climbed the barrier. Yes. Uh, Whoop. What was that? Well, knowing Shelby, he's probably going to want to get a job as in valet parking now. Whoa, trying to get into the second parking bay, Shelby spends almost an hour, and he causes thousands of dollars worth of damage. This is not exactly what I wanted. Let your car fully spin out. He's spinning the back of the car around by hitting the gas. Shelby doesn't give up, but he really should. Woo. If you see this man in a parking lot, run. I totaled the vehicle. I'm just glad that's not our car. Yeah. Jason wants more independence. If I cut, I'm gonna kick him out of the car. Ever since getting here, Jason has had to deal with his husband constantly grabbing at the wheel. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Today, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Jason is determined to make his own mistakes. Let me do it. Okay, I'll try and shut up. Uh oh, uh oh, oh. Sorry. Adrian resists the urge to give orders. Okay, are you close to that curb? But now he's asking rhetorical questions. How can you get close to that yeah, curb? Yeah, I'm going to back. Okay, how far back? Okay, Adrian, let me do it. Okay. No. Sorry. Without any help, Jason drives better. You're finding drive and reverse a lot faster now, too. Yeah. One problem with Adrian's instructions... Okay, now... Right. ...is that they're often wrong. Oh. Look at that. No, it's good. Ugh. Sorry, 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 sorry. Even when Jason knows he's getting bad advice... Can you power out of it? Yeah! Yeah! He obediently follows it. Good boy, okay. Adrian's not getting it. I'm going there. Okay. Whoa. Oh! Oh, that wasn't a bump. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh. That's not good. Jason is handling the controls. A little overcorrected. But Adrian's pulling all the strings. You're gonna have to go back. Jason needs a little more heart and tons more courage. Oh, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful... Ed has plenty of courage. And heart. This one could be trickier. He needs the other thing from that movie. Look, what? you're scratching the side of the car, Ed. Brains. You're scratching the side of the car. That's not a problem to you? Well, no. But you're still doing it. You're still forcing things. Forcing what? You're causing further damage to the car doing that. What damage? I don't think I'm doing any damage to this vehicle. Just look at that car. I don't know if there's one corner that hasn't been damaged. Good job. Yes. Ed didn't rage, but he was pushing the boundary. He still has that urge to keep pushing after he hits something. Marnie's up next. Marnie gets into the first spot fine, but then she does a big no-no. Oh my God. Marnie hits a lot of times, but she never causes any real damage to the car. Until this. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. Marnie finishes faster than anyone else. And I did it without any panic. She is getting better. Told you I'm graduating. Jennifer is not good in tight spaces. I really have an issue. In fact, they make her panic. I really need your help here, honey. I really do. I really need it. Baby, I don't know how to help you. I can't get out of here. I can't get out of here. I don't know how to do it. I've tried everything I know. I can't do this. I don't know what, to, what else to do. She just gets herself more and more frustrated and her performance gets even worse. <laughs> just get me out of this car. I can't do this. Amazingly, Jennifer does do it. And she doesn't peel any paint. That, I think, was one of the toughest things I've ever done. Billie Jean is wearing stilettos again, but not for long. I want to graduate. Billie has improved a lot. You don't even need me anymore. I think I might have graduated you. Billy gets stuck, of course. <laughs> inches, Billy, inches. But she keeps her composure. Yes. Billy Jean is actually taking her time, doing it right. I'll let her park my car anytime. Billy gets her own car. Oh. Just barely. Into all four parking bays. With only one real paint scrape. Perfect. Billy's the second best of the worst. I'm feeling pretty confident about graduation. When we come back, Shelby learns to ride a bike. Oh, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Hey, riding a bike for most kids is pure fun. What they don't realize is that they're preparing to become car drivers. Shelby missed this all-important vehicular step, so for him, it's training wheel time. You heard correctly. Shelby can drive a car, but not a bike. When I'm training new drivers, I often refer to, to riding a bicycle because the mechanics are the same. Where you look is where you go, your perception, so absolutely the same. And just like a car, if the road runs out, you have to stop. Oh, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. In 20 minutes, Shelby's ready to move on. My training wheels are off. Took me forever, but I got them off. At first, <laughs> Shelby has no idea how to keep Whoa. his weight above the bike. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> but after about an hour, he starts to get it. Pedal more, pedal more, pedal more. Shelby, we're riding the bike, buddy. Yeah. We're riding the bike, Shelby. Pedal, okay. keep pedaling, man. Yeah! Yeah! You got it, buddy. Slow down, slow down. There's a lot of near mishaps, and Shelby's shirt gets ruined. Pedal, 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 pedal. But he persists and eventually gets into the groove of bike riding. Pedal, pedal. Shelby, you know how to ride a bike. Yes! Ah, yes! Big day at the office. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Feet on the pedals. You got it, man. You got it. And the All braking right. and everything. Wicked. All right. Dun, 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 dun. I did it. Learning to ride a bike took Shelby just over two hours. Or 30 years. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. To really connect with a car, you have to become part of the car. And the only way to do that is by driving a stick shift. Compared with automatics, stick shifts are cheaper to buy, they're easier on gas, and they provide greater acceleration. So why are people afraid of them? Before Canada's worst drivers drive the stick shift challenge, our head instructor, Scott, is giving private lessons. When you take your foot off the clutch, you have to gradually go onto the gas. Right. If a manual vehicle is in gear and you press on the gas pedal, the engine's flywheel turns the drive shaft, which supplies power to the wheels. 
If you press on the clutch, the whole unit disengages. If your foot's on the clutch and you press the gas, your car doesn't go anywhere. Mm. Therefore, pressing down on the clutch is the same as being in neutral. To regain power, simply release the clutch and the drive shaft will re-engage. Come off your clutch, please. Come off your clutch. If you start perfectly, the engine's flywheel will turn the clutch plate. If you don't give it enough gas, this friction will cause a stall. More gas, more gas, more gas. Get clutch in. Too much gas means the engine's flywheel will spin so fast, the friction will burn the clutch plate instead of turning it. Okay. We don't need to press hard. Surprisingly, three of Canada's worst drivers used to own standards. So, to show how easy this course is, we're giving the test drive honor to Marnie. Marnie learned on a stick shift. Like riding a bike, it's a skill you don't forget. Stop! There's a smile on her face for a change. Not altogether too bad. This course is basically a straightaway with a few stops built in. At the top, drivers simply have to turn around and head back. Stay calm. Good for Marnie. Marnie's more self-assured, but her cornering could still use some work. Marnie had an almost perfect run. Not a 10, but... <laughs> Am I getting close? Close, I'd say. You know what? It's all that confidence. Road Raging Ed is next. Ed used to own a stick shift, so this drive should be casual. Is it in second now? Why do I have to tell you, anyway? Second. Is that second? Oh, man. You have to pay attention to the road in line. Okay, it's green. Today, Ed hasn't said one friendly word to the woman he's hoping will move back in with him. Okay, you have to do a three-point turn. And you can do it, Ed. <laughs> Stop! Ah! Oh, Ed, sorry. He's got anger. Does he ever? This yank is practically violent. Sorry. He's out of control right now. He's not thinking like a driver. He's angry. Ed is a dangerous man. His issues are um, anger issues, which are emotional issues. And he needs those issues treated. When we come back... Ouch! Ouch! Jason mans the controls. He likes to rev the engine really, really, really hard. Kind of like that. And then he'll stall. That's the pattern. It's Stick Shift Appreciation Day here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. But not everyone is being fully appreciative. You have to pay attention to the road sign. Shelby's next. This is reverse. This is first. Oh, boy. Ow. Whoops. This vehicle drives like a tank. Second gear. But it can't sustain this abuse. A clutch disc is just a few millimeters thick. If you grind it away completely, you're looking at about a thousand bucks before you can drive again. Release the clutch! And you will go! Second gear. Ah, uh, shoot. I'm thinking I'm in neutral. Keep the gas, keep the gas, finish the clutch. Time and again, Shelby gives the car too much gas. Oh, what happened? And he quickly grinds away the clutch. Break. 
Holy smokes, it stinks. Do you think you burned the clutch right out? Can you do that? You sure can burn the clutch out. Shelby has indeed burned out the clutch. I'm thinking maybe should I hire a mechanic to follow me around just for these types of situations. We do have a mechanic following Shelby around. Okay. And he's bringing a truly indestructible backup car. It's a Lada. But Billie Jean will be the first to drive it. Good, no hopping. Billie Jean learned to drive on a stick shift. So she has no trouble until what's supposed to be a three-point turn. It's not power steering. When she muscles through her 13th turn, Billy hits her boiling point. Oh, no, Billy. Oh, that was close. Which is also her breaking point. Who stalled? <sighs> Whatever. By the end, Billy's so frightened, she shouldn't be driving. Oh, I'm shaking. That shaky finish is a bad sign. It just got really nervous being in such a tight space. Jason's husband used to own a standard. But for obvious reasons, he sold it. Shifting between first and second, Jason comes to a complete stop. OK, now let the clutch out. Now let the clutch out. There we go, that's second. Yay! Oh, red light. I think I can smell the clutch from here. At the top of the hill, Jason stalls physically. Oh. And mentally. I don't know what do you mean now. Sorry. Oh, that sound pains me. Like, honestly pains me. I feel for the engine. Revving the engine like that and, and uh, riding the clutch, it, there's going to be thousands of dollars in repairs on this vehicle. Every time I glance at Jason, he's either stalling or crashing. I can't bear to look anymore. See what happens when I look? I'm, I'm totally confused. Uh... Adrian moves the cans that he thinks are holding Jason up. Two feet should do it, actually. Yeah. Ouch! How did that one go? That was interesting. Jason's crashing so frequently, you can almost set your watch by it. Three, two, one. I don't want to say he's predictable, but... Uh... He's predictable. Hard left, hard, 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 not hard enough. OK, you're going to have to go back again. Oh, oh look out below! Oh. So put your clutch back in. Instead of a quick three-point turn, Jason spends 10 minutes doing an 11-point turn. Yeah, hard left, hard left, hard left, hard left. Adrian's rhyming off so many commands. Put the clutch in, put the clutch in. Put, pull the clutch in. Jason's not thinking for himself. And right up, right up to the top, right up to the, up to the top, stop. Jason stalled 12 times. Obviously, Adrian's advice isn't working. Sometimes I would rather prefer Adrian not sitting there. Don't tell me do things. Jennifer's next. Jennifer rounds the turn. Get her in a second. And nearly lights the clutch on fire. I don't understand why I'm not going anywhere. Oh, honey. It was in second. What did I do? Smoky, smoky. I know. Wow. Burning the clutch. Oh, the brake! Oh! I don't understand it. I don't get it, John. Give me a smoke now. It's now. All she's doing, actually, is she's just winding herself up more and more. What do I do? I let off the brake and I roll back. When Jennifer calms herself down, I have all day. She goes again, but 
While making her nine-point turn, Jennifer hits five obstacles. Oh, I can't control my f In the end, hey there. Jennifer uh, is dizzy. Oh my god. Perhaps it's from all the fumes. Just all the pedals and, and the footing. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Shelby's back to pick up where he left off. Wow, cool. Like on the clutch, or you're not going to go anywhere. There we go. At the top of the hill. Like on the clutch. Shelby can't get his foot off the brake and onto the gas quickly enough. You make a plan and commit to it. Shelby's plan is to let Elric control the rollback by handling the emergency brake. I'm going to hit the gas really fast. And I'll drop the brake. On one, two, three, go. You didn't let go of the clutch. Do you smell that burning smell? You have to let go of the clutch. Little by little. Oh, so slightly. Shelby gets himself turned around. Try it again. But instead of driving away, Shelby puts his foot on the clutch and coasts to the bottom, where he stalls again. Oh, shoot! Shelby should be disappointed, but he feels like he succeeded. You did it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I know. It's been another rough road. Breaking, breaking, breaking. But one of Canada's worst drivers is about to become the rehab center's newest graduate. After a bone-rattling episode of stick shift driving, soft touch maneuvering, oh my god, and parking space simulations. I can't do this. It's time for me to join the experts so we can decide who the most improved motorist is. That person will get their driver's license back and go home. Somebody's going to get their driver's license back. Are you comfortable giving any of those people back their license? I, I think so. I, I think I'm ready to give back Billie Jean's. I'd feel safe sharing the road with her. This is a hard one. I, I think at this point, I'd feel more comfortable giving Marnie her license back. I think she's, she's changed the most. Philippe? Uh, I would agree with you uh, for that. I think she's the most improved driver out there. I think it would be contrary to the public interest, actually, to graduate her right now. She's made a lot of uh, improvement, but not compared to uh, Billie Jean. I agree with Cam. Billie Jean should graduate. That means it's a toss-up, and Scott has the deciding vote. I'm saying graduate both. The worst is one person. The most improved is one person. Who improved the most? We've reached the end of another episode here at Canada's Worst Driver, which means it's time for someone to get their driver's license back and head home. So the question is, who has improved enough to graduate tonight? And the answer is the woman who has learned to walk a mile in the shoes of a confident driver, which is not you, Billie Jean. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. Go drive Thank yourself you. home. Thank you. Yay! Before she got to rehab, she's very, very apprehensive about merging into traffic or changing lanes. Marnie couldn't deal with driving. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what, I don't want to do this. When she did get here, I'm just nervous. You know what, I'm just nervous. Driving was so nerve-wracking, it would make Marnie throw up. Now? I can do anything now. I really can. Marnie has overcome her fear of driving close to obstacles. Ah, yeah, bonus. Her fear of reverse. I've never been more proud of myself. And her fear of ice. I got that one nailed. Yeah. I am a changed woman, not only with driving, but with everything. It's been that great of an experience. When I drive to work on Monday, I'm going the way that I normally avoid to go, because I have to merge twice. Marnie Madison. 
our newest rehabilitated driver. I am so excited. I am. I'm so happy. The rest of the nominees are not so happy. Like, this is a f joke. Next time on Canada's Worst Driver. Oh my God. The nominees go off-roading. They learn how to do a forward emergency brake skid turn. And we bring back the challenge hated most by jerky drivers, the water tank challenge. <laughs>